All right. Well, thanks. Um, here with Will Anderson with Sherman Associates. Um, thanks for joining me today, Will. How are you doing? Uh, I'm really well. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to chat. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Will has been with Sherman Associates for a number of years now and was recently promoted to um, Director of Development at Sherman. And uh, in that capacity, he will lead the development team and driving real estate development projects in existing and new markets and oversee Sherman's team of developers and lead relationships with cities and finance agencies. Um, so congrats on the new role. How long have you been uh, in this new role now? Thank you. Uh, a whopping two weeks. Uh, so I am, uh, I, I've been with Sherman since 2012. Uh, so uh, kind of, uh, started as a, a associate developer and kind of worked my way through uh, the, the various development roles up to director of development here. Been in the role for two weeks. So really uh, just kind of starting the process of implementing some of the you know initiatives that uh, leadership has, has tasked me with. Okay. And how have your job duties changed? Is it more kind of taking on more big picture responsibilities now as well as hands-on stuff or how does that work? Yeah, that, that's that's exactly right. So, uh, you know, kind of transitioning a bit away from the production role, you know, working just exclusively on closing deals to more visioning and implementing initiatives and process and over overseeing the team. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll still be, work, I've got a, a couple of deals that I'll, you know, continue to be the, the primary developer and, and working on, which is exciting. I love that, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's why I'm a developer, right? To do deals. Uh, but also, uh, you know, helping to helping to helping to lead the team and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, implementing uh, things that make everybody's life easier and get better deals. Yeah, awesome. And how um, can you talk a little bit about some of the projects you're currently working on? I know we recently wrote about the uh, Beltline TOD project in St. Louis Park. That's really really a cool project and a lot of exciting stuff happening there. But um, um, can you update us on that and some of the other stuff you're working on? Yeah, certainly. So uh, Beltline uh, is a really uh, uh, comprehensive and will be a, uh, it's a really complex and will be a really impactful project uh, in St. Louis Park at uh, Beltline and Highway 25. It is a mixed use project that includes uh, just over 400 units, a couple of market rate uh, buildings, uh, one incorporating uh, a grocery store on the first floor. There is a affordable uh, building with uh, rents at 60% AMI and below, uh, targeting families with over 80% of the units, two bedrooms plus, and some more deeply affordable units in that building as well. And then we are also building a parking garage, a park and ride facility for Southwest LRT, 268 stalls for them adjacent to the Beltline station on the, on the new Southwest LRT. Uh, that is a, a project that we have, uh, we responded to an RFP, we have worked through uh, kind of uh, numerous uh, complicated processes uh, in terms of uh, you know, design and visioning and getting the project to the point where it is today. Point where it is today is we have uh, we have a, a really strong design vision where there has been preliminary input from you know both city staff and city council that uh, they like the direction that we're going so we're continuing to advance that as well as uh, a general outline of, of economics uh, that, that work for the, the project in terms of uh, support for the project so it is a deal that's moving forward uh, now on a fast track we are projecting that the, the two marker rate components, including the grocery store and the, and the parking garage are gonna uh, close and be under construction by quarter one of 2022 here uh, with the afford building to follow that we'll be submitting for bonds and tax credits uh, to move that project forward. Uh, we're hoping for an allocation of bonds and tax credits here uh, in January of this year and that would move forward sometime mid 2022. So. Uh, really cool project, uh, great project team, great partnership with the city. Uh, excited to move that project forward. Okay, yeah. What are some of the biggest challenges of putting together a project like that? A lot of different layers. You mentioned market rates, some affordable housing, which is great. Um, how how do you manage that? Yeah. Um, well, lots of lots of lots of hands on engagement with the the various parties, right? I mean the 
the city plays a critical role. They're the they're the current owner of uh, of a large portion of the property. So uh, regular, uh, you know, biweekly, you know, formal engagement meetings with them, and you know, off off week, uh, you know, engagement via email uh, as well. Uh, critical engagement with uh, Met Council and Southwest LRT. Uh, they um, there was a, a complicated process earlier on in our uh, engagement on the site uh, where a, a transit easement was, a permanent transit easement was granted over a, a large portion of the site to help facilitate the, um, the ultimate 268 parking stalls uh, on the site. Um, and uh, regular engagement with them in terms of the design of that parking ramp and uh, their needs surrounding Southwest LRT. Um, there are significant access uh, um, constraints that need to be worked through on the site, and that requires engagement of Hennepin County, uh, who has uh, interest in the uh, in um, Highway 725 on the on the northern extent. And um, there are um, lots of different stakeholders that uh, you know play a role in the visioning of this development. Um, it's about it's about regular uh, engagement and uh, kind of you know trying to pull everybody together towards that end goal that end vision which ultimately is a, a really impactful exciting vibrant development uh, it, it that that's everybody's end goal uh, obviously there are lots of little bits of different challenges and issues to get there so I think our role as a as a developer is to um, help to facilitate dialogue and help to push everybody towards that end goal that everybody wants to get to. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, the, the city and Met Council, some of those other um, stakeholders. Um, I, I understand from your resume that you have experience with working for both cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, can you talk about your job duties there and, and kind of how does that fit in with what you do now just it seems like you've got some some good experience there from the public yeah. sector side as well as what you're doing now so um is that pretty valuable it is yeah it really is uh so i i did work for both the city of st paul and the city of minneapolis um city of st paul uh, i actually i was an intern at the city of st paul in college i worked under the neighborhood stabilization uh program uh doing uh, primarily, you know, facilitating primarily, you know, rehab of, of single family homes. And this was, you know, back at the beginning of the recession uh, in, two, I think I started there maybe 2007 or 2008, around there. Um, and, um, you know, so really, really valuable to get an understanding of kind of that process for um, the, the, the process that municipalities work through to implement big programs uh, like the, the NSP uh, program and uh, you know just walking walking projects through uh, on the on the city side um, was you know really important early on obviously in my in my career um, to get an understanding of how how practically city cities work um, and then for city of Minneapolis I worked for a, a time is actually um, uh, as a housing inspector uh, for the for the city of Minneapolis so not direct in uh, any um, in any development or, or planning role, but as a, as a housing inspector, uh, walk through hundreds of houses in the city of Minneapolis, right? Uh, and uh, kind of inspecting for life safety issues and, and that kind of thing. And I think what that really gave me a, a perspective of was, uh, you know, the housing, housing stock in the city and the real need to deliver more quality, affordable housing. And, you know, I'm, I'm Thankful uh, in in my role at Sherman, you know, um, we're a developer that focuses on um, all sorts of different types of housing, right? You know, um, our our bread and butter has historically been affordable housing, so it's it's awesome to be able to uh, work on these you know, impactful affordable housing projects uh, and deliver that really you know needed uh, you know housing type uh, within the communities that we work. And also, you know, do some of the more higher end luxury stuff and, and hotels and uh, office buildings and kind of community impact projects, right? Um, Sherman is a developer where you have the opportunity to work on all those different types of projects where you don't um, necessarily have that opportunity at a lot of other developers who are more focused in on one on one asset class. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are some of the other projects you're working on right now, um, either market rate or affordable housing or other 
project types? Yeah, so um, we're 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 under construction now. Uh, I, I'll just maybe reference uh, two projects that we closed here in the in the last few in the last few months. Um, one is a project adjacent to the Thrivent headquarters in downtown Minneapolis. It's called the Moment uh, Project. It is 222 uh, housing units and I think it's 10 stories uh, tall. Uh, you know, real kind of significant investment in the downtown core uh, during a period of time, perhaps where some of that investment has been paused uh, due to kind of market conditions. We're committed to Minneapolis. We're committed to development of the downtown core uh, and excited that we were able to close that project and start construction a couple of months ago. Um, one significant component of that project is uh, a Firefighters for Healing. Uh, it is, is a nonprofit uh, that um, kind of operates, it, it kind of maybe a, a more familiar reference, it operates similar to uh, like a Ronald McDonald house. Uh, this property is adjacent and will be connected to HCMC. Uh, Firefighters for Healing will serve as uh, kind of a home away from home for, for individuals that are victims of burns and their families uh, as a space to live in more of a home setting than a, than a hospital or a, um, or a, you know, a, 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 some sort of like um, temporary, um, you know, stay uh, shelter. So it's a, it's a home, right? Um, so that's, we're really excited about that. They're taking almost a, a full floor there. Uh, again, you know, kind of a community impact uh, component uh, of this of this project. So it's um, great to be able to incorporate that kind of a that kind of into into our project. I know it's a strong commitment of our leadership, uh, George, George and Chris, to uh, ensure that we're not just doing development, but we're doing the right development that serves communities that need it. Um, so that's one project um, that, that we closed uh, within the last few months. Another is a project called Beam uh, up in, in North Minneapolis. Uh, it is a affordable housing project that is, uh, again, targeted towards families. Uh, over 80% of the units at, are, are two or three bedrooms. Uh, an interesting component there is we're delivering some towns uh, as well, which is uh, you know a, a type of product in the affordable uh, realm that is that is not typically delivered. So, um, you know, those, those are two projects uh, that we clo that we closed recently. Okay. What's your outlook for the overall sector as far as business conditions, say in multifamily? Um, do you see yourself staying busy there for the foreseeable future? We do. Yep. Yeah, we, 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 we certainly do. Um, you know, obviously, it's no secret that there have been, you know, some impacts of material pricing and, and uh, labor pricing and potential sh shortages uh, here over the last six plus months as we've kind of come out of, um, or starting to, to come out of uh, the uh, pandemic. Um, we are seeing, as other folks are seeing, that, that moderate a bit, you know, we're, we're still um, looking for that to translate down to the, we're looking for some of the, the moderation and futures pricing to translate down to the materials supplier and subcontractor level. Um, we think that things are trending, you know, we're fully anticipating that, uh, you know, the material pricing and, and labor shortages kind of stabilize, uh, and allow us to move forward projects. We haven't, we haven't stopped any projects. We haven't, you know, walked away from anything because of those issues. Uh, but certainly, uh, we have, uh, you know, maybe, um, dug a little bit deeper or made some modifications to, to or projects to facilitate outcomes uh, in this market that are um, that 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 um, that are you know, more favorable in this market. So I, I would say um, that's an issue that I think is moderating. Um, in terms of the, the the volume of development that we're looking to do and where we're looking to do development, we're we're growing. Um, so we um, are committed to the the primary markets that we have developed in in the past here and. You know Minnesota and the Twin Cities specifically, Iowa uh, and the Des Moines market. We've got about 30 acres of land uh, in an area called River Point West Grays Landing uh, down there uh, that uh, that we own, and we'll continue to develop a couple of projects a year down there. Uh, in Wisconsin, Milwaukee market can continue to be committed there. 
We're also growing out in the Mountain West. Uh, we, we have actually hired uh, a team uh, out there, a senior developer, a business development person, and a development associate who are now based uh, out in Denver to uh, you know, really drive additional development uh, in the Mountain West. Obviously, I think we, like a lot of folks, are seeing strong demographic trends uh, there. I uh, and are looking to looking to grow in that market um, to do the volume uh, of development that uh, we have a goal to do. We need to expand out of those markets that we are currently active in, and that's where we're that's where we're focusing. Okay, great. And uh, just by way of background, uh, Sherman started out here in the Twin Cities, right? And how how long have has Sherman been in business? And uh, can you give us a little snapshot of that? And um, kind of how they've how they've grown yeah sure thing so uh we so george sherman uh started the company been in business for over 40 years i think it's 45 years uh now mm -hmm. uh and it's kind of uh it, it's uh i, I don't want to say it's a it's a it, george started out with a couple of duplexes right uh i think he he, he was originally trained as a as a uh, a chemist in college right and started investing in small real estate bought a couple of duplexes and it's grown into into what it is today right so we we've developed over eight thousand housing units we've got four hotels in our portfolio i think close to a, a million square feet in uh commercial and, and office uh assets right so um in that in that you know 40 plus year period really have have grown uh, and um, you know are involved in uh, various different you know commercial uh, development types. Well, and I'm sure George uh, seen a lot of peaks and valleys during those years in the business, from you know the the recessions and the, um, right up until the pandemic. Here, how did how did you folks weather the pandemic when we were sort of in shutdown mode and and all that yeah yeah um i think it it certainly helps that we have different that we have different business lines right you know um clearly our, our hospitality uh business lines were impacted really significantly as i mentioned we've got four hotels and we have uh we actually um, own some starbucks uh, and operate some starbucks uh stores as well clearly there was an impact on our, on our hospitality line the, the fact that we uh have a diverse portfolio allowed us to you know, weather some of the impacts there. We're already, you know, seeing some significant uh, improvements uh, in the, the hospitality sector in terms of occupancy and, um, you know, revenues and room rates. And um, we're seeing maybe a, a more return to, to closer to normal uh, on the hospitality side. Uh, on the on the residential side, um, you know, clearly there were some impacts as well. We were we're long-term owners and operators of our properties as well, so we took a really active role in helping helping our residents apply for some of the um, you know rental assistance and, and subsidies uh, that were that were available. So I think maybe we took a bit of a more proactive role than um, than some in uh, providing residents with with those resources. Um, so we're we're we, we've made it through. Uh, you know, it, it's certainly there were impacts, but I think due to the resilience and strength of our team uh, out there on site, interacting with residents every day and really driving the uh, you know, quality, um, driving the management of the quality properties that we have, we've, we've made it through in a really strong way. And again, our projecting growth coming out of this thing. Okay. Well, Will, you've been uh, generous with your time and have covered uh, quite a bit of ground there. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap things up here? No, I don't think so. I think it's good just to, good just to chat with you. Um, I'm excited about my my new role uh, at Sherman, and again, you know, um, just in in the new role, kind of looking to looking to add value and implement processes that you know, give us uh, better better projects, better deals, and make everybody's life easier. So great. Well, good luck in your new role, and hopefully we can chat again soon. And uh, thanks again for your time. Thanks, Brian. I really appreciate it. All right. Take care.